We're back again. Hi. In greater numbers. Well, no, it's still the two of us. <laughs> it's just two of us. I'm Chris. I am not Chris. And here to fill a gap in Series Seven's bullshit is Pond Life, a series of shorts that, if I remember correctly, aired on the Red Button day by day in the week leading up to Asylum of the Daleks' first broadcast in 2012. Uh, Pond Life was written by future showrunner... Excuse me. Excuse me. Um, Pond Life was written by future showrunner Chris Chibnall. Um, it centres around Amy and Rory, uh, and five months of their life over the course of that year, sort of filling in the gap in real time to us, the viewers, as to what's happened to them in 2012, I guess, is the implication. Um... It's available to watch on YouTube, go watch it, but it's also on the Series 7 box set. On Disc 2, after Asylum of the Daleks, which is on Disc 1. This Weird. seems to be a running theme with these DVDs. Blu-rays. Also, all the special features that we looked at on this disc just now were out of sync. They were. The sound was out. Of, was delayed by like a half second on all of them. It's extremely annoying. <clears throat> That's great. The out of sync audio is one of those things that really gets under your skin. Isn't oh, it? I hate it. I hate it so much. Like, you can't... Especially like, when it's something it's that... a fraction of a second. Well, out, especially when it's, it's something so like annoying. this where it's on the published item. Because yeah, yeah. that means it wasn't checked. Yeah. Or it was, and the person doing it was just... Uh, uh. Uh, anyway. Right. Pond Life. Uh, if you're watching this, we presume you've already watched it. Uh, I think that the first four parts of this are a relatively cute, lovely bit of... Yeah, little charming little snippets. <clears throat> yeah, I, I love the idea that... I remember doing it I remember doing it when it came out. I love the idea of, oh, the new series starts on Saturday. But every day, Monday through Friday, if you press the red button, you can watch a cheeky little short film, little mini-series, just to get you in the mood for Saturday when the series comes back. That's a great idea. Nowadays, obviously, it'd probably be on the YouTube channel and debut on the social media for Doctor Who instead. Yeah. Um, I think it's a really cute idea. Yeah, it is. I think Karen Gillan's wig is doing its best. Bless. Kind of distracting. Yeah, because this was one of the last things she filmed for Doctor Who uh, at the time. <laughs> Early into her um, Guardians of the Galaxy filming. The next time she filmed for the show after she left, she is also wearing a wig because her hair hadn't grown back fully yet by that point. Yeah. <laughs> but also in that scene, Matt Smith's also wearing a wig. Yep. <laughs> so good on them both. Um, but yeah, uh, Pond Life, written by Chibnall. Um, it's cute. The first episode is nice. Just Amy and Rory getting... Answer machine messages from the Doctor, who after, after the events of Doctor and the Widow of the Wardrobe, I guess, is making a, a decent effort to sort of pop back into their lives often. Yeah. Maybe because he misses them. Like, he got he got them a house to stay away from them to keep them safe, but he obviously misses them, so he checks back in on them from time to time. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the cutaway to him just having his own weird little adventures to distract himself. Like, yeah. it, it's technically the only time we see the 11th Doctor face off against the Sontarans bar a crap cameo in his last story. Um, so I like that they dug out Sontaran suits and Sontaran sized performers just to get these couple of shots. Yeah. I like the idea of him surfing a supernova, like to get away from something. That's quite a funny idea. That, that is, it's some impressive effects for like a little snippet. I like him toasting a crumpet. I think that's funny. Is that what that was? It was a crumpet. I thought it was a giant marshmallow. Why it was would it a be cr- a giant marshmallow? It was a crumpet. Um, I I like the fact that he apparently is a session musician who does backing vocals on hip hop songs <laughs> in his spare time because he that's he's so giving awkward. he's giving wonderfully painful like cool attempting to be cool geography teacher energy. You know in that, that makes scene. me think of. Go on. My money don't jiggle jiggle. It, it folds. folds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> By the time this video comes out, that'll be a dead trend. <laughs> no, do you know what? If you know that song, obviously it's Louis Theroux, mm-hmm. that series of documentaries, if you've not already seen them, why? That episode is amazing. <laughs> he gets put up against... Um... Everyone take a shot, not Chris is going off on a tangent. <laughs> I 
I love Louis Theroux. Let's just yes, you, yes, you Louis Theroux. I've loved Louis Theroux since before it was cool to love <laughs> Louis Theroux. Second episode, he arrives to warn them of something. Oh, no, get them to join him on an adventure. But he's arrived too early in their timeline, apparently. Yeah. And the events of at least the first two episodes have already happened for them. Which confuses me, because the events of the first episode rely heavily on him knowing where they are in their relationship, but whatever. Um, <clears throat> it's it, That obviously, again, you're not meant to think about it. The Tuesday of the week of the new series starting, that's a fun little teaser for the next couple of weeks. So, fine. Whatever. And I do like the fact that he comes in, sees that they're clearly sleeping, and still goes, Oh, stop it! <laughs> but, like, I love, I love that he's so aware that he could be walking in on something naughty. Oh, my gosh. But it's... It, it freaks him out. Tell him about episode three. You're like, I'm picking whatever just fell over. Episode three, uh, Rory goes to the bathroom and finds an ood on the loo. And uh, he's obviously shocked. Amy's shocked. But they kind of just can't accept it as if like, oh gosh, this again. And he's got his, uh, he's, he's got his um, death is the only answer voiceover instead of the normal voiceover. Do you know, I love that they, they, they ooh, kind of blink like cats. Yes, they do. Like happy cats. Uh, episode four sees that ood basically being their butler. Yeah, and, and they the feel awkward that, about it. He apparently saved him from uh, an Androvax something or other. And it's like, oh, Sarah Jane Adventures nod. That's cute. The Androvax. Okay, sure. Um, so basically this Ood's staying with the ponds for a little bit before the Doctor can come pick them up. And I do kind of like the weird gag at the end of, you know, Rory being like, I feel so guilty. Because obviously it's just doing just all the household chores. Stuff. Yeah. Like it's a nice comedy beat from Arthur Darvo and Karen Gillan. But it is also like, yeah, this is weird. Um... But still, the mood's kind of charming. And then we get episode five. I like the idea of when people pull over and they just pop the hood of the car for a second and just check something in the, you know, in the engine. You know, look at look under the bonnet and just check something for a moment and then close the bonnet and carry on doing what they're doing. I like this, I like that we saw the Doctor doing his equivalent of that, fiddling with something in the lamp. That was a cute little, do you know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. kind of sweet. But he's leaving the messages, he goes to visit and they're not in, it's pith wet through, it's raining, he's got his little brolly, he heads back to the TARDIS, leaves him a message and then sort of clearly gets some kind of second, second guesses himself that maybe he might be bothering them or prying and he sonics the, down the phone and you deletes the message. You kind of feel like there's something wrong. Yeah. And it, it's whether or not this is like he should step back or something and let them have whatever needs to be done. Because we see a very brief flash of an argument. Rory storming out of the house and Amy screaming slash crying after him. Mm. Amy gets home, sees there's no message, hoping obviously she'd heard from him maybe, and then says like, raggedy man, we need you, I need you. Uh, I don't like this one so much because I don't like the story arc it's setting up. No, I also kind of hate the fact that you have to have watched this miniseries to be ready for what's about to happen between the ponds. Well, you don't have to. Well, people who... Let me know in the comments if this was the case with you. If you didn't see Pond Life before you saw Asylum of the Daleks, did their relationship status in that story feel very out, out of, of nowhere yeah. in Asylum of the Daleks? Because keep in mind, if you're just box setting the stories, in on this, Asylum of the Daleks is on disc one straight after Doctor the Widow and the Wardrobe. Pond Life is in the special features on disc two. So, so if you were playing all, they go from having a wonderful happy Christmas with their busy mate, the Raggedy Man, and then they're div like getting divorced in the immediate next episode. It's like, what the hell has happened? It just feels so weird. This at least kind of sets you up that, oh, something's wrong. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But that shouldn't be the job of the fun little miniseries, really. I guess Pond Life is one of the DVD or iTunes prequels, but as a small... Red button experiment instead. Um, I've got to say I'm quite disappointed. Um, in <laughs> because I was under the impression that Pond Life was going to be like a little snippet into the aquatic life of uh, you know back back garden ponds. 
Well, I'm disappointed that I didn't see any frogs or newts and uh, I would like my money back. Well, what did you think of Pond Life? <laughs> Do you think this is a fun little uh, addition to the series? Do you like playing the When's Karen in a Wig game? Uh, spoilers, the answer is every shot that isn't the clear deleted scene of her shouting at Rory from Asylum of the Daleks' cutting room floor. When will you wear wigs? <clears throat> when will you wear wigs? Have you worn wigs? Um, uh, yeah, uh, let us know down in the comments below. Uh, I just thought we'd cover this considering it is actually leaning and leading into what comes next, so it's kind of essential viewing in a way, but I think by this point we're drowning in prequels and spin-offs. Yeah, yeah. It's it's kind of ridiculous now. Um, <clears throat> drowning in a pond of... Ponds. And... Now, the next time we'll cover anything like this, I think, is after we've finished Series 7. We'll do the Series 7 prequels. Um, which, again, like Series 6, is only like four or five of them. We've already watched one. The one leading into Asylum. Uh, leading into... Uh, Doctor the Widow in the Wardrobe. <clears throat> um, and then in the run-up to the 50th, we've got a couple videos about incidental short films, but they're a lot more palatable because they're good ones like Night of the Doctor and um, The Last Day and things like that. Stuff that was actually four to seven minute short episodes leading up to the 50th. That's a lot more fun to cover. Yeah. Um, we'll also, in terms of spin-off media in the near future... When we get to the 50th anniversary stuff, we will be looking at the Five-ish Doctors reboot, amongst other things like that. Yay, now that's something I can get behind. But until then, join us next time for Series 7 Part 1, Part 1, where we're going to be talking about Asylum of the Daleks, the, uh, the, 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 the dinosaurs on a spaceship, and a town called Mercy. Goodbye! My money don't jiggle jiggle. It falls. Oh,